everyone. Today, I will be talking about the FNAF 2 theories. I have a couple of theories in mind. The first being Jeremy Fitzgerald will be accessed by Mike Schmidt through the power of Dream Theory, through the power of Remnants. How will he be doing this? He will be wearing the Freddy mask he uses in the FNAF 2 game. By doing this, he's going to use Remnants similar to the games, similar to the ball pit in the novels, not the games, the novels. Wherein, if you touch an object, it will carry the agony or remnants of someone else in the past. That's my first theory. Second theory, Abby, whose name is an anagram for baby, well, will become baby. <laughs> baby the circus animatronic, who is well known to have become one of Mike Afton's rivals, basically. Arch rivals. And what's interesting with this is that they could introduce the horrors of actual child murder there. Theory 3. Um, R-rated. The second movie will become officially R-rated. That's just a theory. A game theory. A movie theory. Whatever. But I believe that the, the R rating is because the idea of modern game movies right now is because is that they grow with their audience you know the sonic movie for example sonic 3 is way more mature than the first and second sonic movies and that's very interesting it's a pg-13 movie it's made for teens and i love that now fnaf 2 for theory 4 will also include various animatronics. I've seen some set pictures, but the tr three main ideal animatronics I will have there is probably the toy animatronics, the withered animatronics, and the nightmares. The nightmares will be there be and t to torture, essentially, Mike. Because it will essentially reveal probably a past a part of his past that he left out. Theory 5. Mike is actually canonically William Afton's son. His memories were warped, similar to Matt Pat's theory. His memories were warped by the nightmares. Through the power of illusions. Through the power of their sound discs. Which, illusion disc, I mean. Which allows them to manipulate the the sight and visions of someone turning them into hallucinogenic well fellows and that's it those are my theories for FNAF 2 um what do you think do you think any of them are right do you think what, what do you think also I definitely think that FNAF 2 animatronics are going to be terminators as according to the game store I also think that the Nightmare animatronics are illusion bearing, illusion disc bearing animatronics. And I also think that the Withered animatronics are just the original animatronics with different suits. What do you think? Also, Springtrap will be there. <laughs> Nemesis of Af well, Mike Afton or Mike Schmidt, whatever. But I'm pretty sure he's just Mike Schmidt for now. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. I'll move on to the next set of this video. These are a set of theories I have for Sonic 3. The first theory is that Tom will die. Potential spoilers, by the way. Tom will die. Yes, I, I just flat out said it. Shadow will somehow kill him. Similar to the one I made to the fanfiction uh, a few months ago. Tom will die. That's what I think. Though people might think it's repetitive because of the death of the owl lady. It could actually function as a, some sort of uh, vengeance drive driven driving force for Sonic. The point of the movie is likely that he has never changed in here, right? His heart. That's the point of the movie. What if Tom dies and then he grows darkness in his heart, right? That means Sonic will become very violent and will become incredibly, incredibly, well, vengeance-driven. Second theory, Gerald Robotnik is not Gerald Robotnik. 
he is actually Black Doom in the form of Gerald Robotnik or maybe using his uh, shenanigans of wizardry or some shit. <laughs> That's just a damn theory. But I believe that is a theory. I don't know. I believe that he is actually Black Doom because canonically Gerald Robotnik should be dead 50 years ago. Forgive me for the language. And then, third theory. Um, let's see. Shadow killing Tom, which is an extension of the first theory, will be, um, what do you call this? Uh, accidental in nature. I don't know how. But somehow, somehow, it will be very accidental, and Shadow would not mean to do it. Okay, now moving on to the plot of the movie. The plot will follow Shadow's origin. If you don't know Shadow's origin, well, it's very simple. He was created in order as a, one of the last experiments in order to save Maria Robotnik's life, who is uh, ill from an unknown disease, a new disease, in fact, and in order to heal her, in order to cure her, they used Shadow's body, a hedgehog's body, in order to create the ultimate life form, to use his blood to cure her. That was Gerald Robotnik's plan. Problem is, the United Federation, the gun agents, did not like the plan. They wanted a weapon, an energy source of some sorts. So they killed everyone on the ship, his entire family, except for Gerald, who died later on, and for Shadow, who survives, weirdly enough, but gets captured and used as an energy source or something, or maybe in, placed in stasis. It wasn't. A, I don't. I don't remember much about that, but. The point is, Shadow's origin is very tragic. So that comes to my other theory. I think it's the third or fourth. Fourth, I think? I, I don't know. I'm not keeping count anymore. What do you call this? Wait, I, I forgot. Wait. Let me, let me read it up. Oh, I remember now. Shadow isn't the only hedgehog creation of Gerald Robotnik. The others being Amy the Hedgehog. And Rouge the Bat. What do you think? Is that a good theory? It's just a theory though. It could be wrong. It could be right. But that's it. Thank you.